Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. It's been a little while since I got to chat with you all. I've been doing a lot of posts lately uh, because God's been chattering. He's a chatterbox. He he is a chatterbox. He's always talking, and we just have to tune in our antenna to listen to him. But anyway, today I just wanted to share with you about angels and about thinking thinking and living outside of the box. Um, we get ourselves so um, bound up by thinking inside of the box, by thinking that everything that we know is the truth, by thinking that everything that we're taught is the truth. And it's, it's pretty hard on your system when you come to realize that something that you believed all your life is a lie. And that can easily happen when you begin to do research. If you've ever um, gone back and studied the original language of the Bible and how it was interpreted, you would be shocked, amazed, upset, <laughs> and uh, everything else. Because a lot of the things that we believe today have, ju have been interpreted by whoever interpreted the Bible by their background doctrine. And so, if a Bible was interpreted by a Baptist, it would have Baptist background in it. And if a and, and so, you can bypass all that by going to the original language. And the original language of the Bible is not really Greek, even though the New Testament is in Greek. Every a lot of things it refers to it refers to in the Old Testament in Hebrew. So the more you have understanding of the Hebrew language the more you have understanding of what the Bible really means. And your whole system and your whole thought process is thrown out of whack when you begin to go back and study what uh, certain things really mean in the Bible. For example, the last hundred years we have been taught things. And because we're not a hundred years old, we believe everything that we're taught. Because they were... That they were taught this, their father's father and their father's father were taught the same thing. So they believe the same thing. And therefore, some of the stuff that we believe that our pastors teach us are not, are not the truth because they are just teaching what they've been taught. Same thing with pharmaceutical. Pharmaceutical doctors only believe pretty much in what they were taught. Uh, and, and, and so on. You, if you go to an institution to learn about a subject, you can only learn what that institution is teaching you. Okay? But today, we have a different institution. Our institution is the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit will give us interpretations of the Bible and understanding of the Bible that um, seminary will not. I personally, I dread seminary school. I, I would never go. I'm ordained. I'm also licensed um, as a minister and I've been trained not so much in the word but how to dig into the word and how to interpret the word and the reason that I don't like, I'm going all over the place here guys, I'm so sorry. Um, I just do that when I don't get to talk to you for a while but the reason that I personally don't like seminary is because seminary teaches you from the point of view of their doctrine. For example, if you go to a Baptist seminary, they teach you Baptist stuff like speaking in tongues is of the devil. Ah, that's not true. If you go to a word of faith doctor, a uh, word of faith school, they'll teach you certain things. If you go to, and I'm not saying anything against them because I was born and raised word of faith and I agree, but I also believe in grace and I also believe in walking in the supernatural. So you see, all of us pick and choose what we choose to believe because we're all led by the Spirit, the same Spirit. And everybody's going to go in different directions. My focus is walking in the supernatural peace and presence and power of God and understanding it. My, my understanding is about grace, which is, has changed my life. But I don't teach a lot on grace because that's not really my area to teach on. My area and expertise, so to speak, is the kingdom of God. And the kingdom is the government and the supernatural power and presence of God in you coming out and ruling. And that and, and that's supernatural. And that's my bent. That's where God gave me an interest. That's where God trained me and raised me up. And, and I experience, I only teach what I experience. 
what I know because I, I, I don't go to seminar and teach what someone else knows. I, I'm ordained and licensed to be a minister, but not taught their word. I'm taught just foundation, and then the rest comes from knowing God and experiencing God in the supernatural uh, experience of the Holy Spirit. So, I don't know where I was going. Oh, you yeah, kind of do. Okay. What I was basically saying is the new covenant is not about rules. It's not about regulations. The old covenant was for Jews only. Jews only. The Ten Commandments were Jews only. So, so important. They were commandments. They were good commandments. But they were there to show you that you couldn't possibly be good enough to keep them. And you were never good enough to keep them. That's why Jesus came and he fulfilled everything so that you're now free to follow your conscience, which is the Holy Spirit. You want you could call it your conscience, but it's really the Holy Spirit in you, leading, guiding, and directing you. Uh, the Old Testament was for Jews. You could not enter into any of their rules or do any of their stuff because you were not a Jew. Okay. The New Covenant opens the door that whoever believes in Jesus and confesses with their heart and believes uh, that Jesus paid the price for all of our lifetime of sins, that we could never be good enough. He paid that price so we could come back to having a relationship. It's all about a relationship. So we could come back to having a relationship with Jesus Christ, with the Father God, with the Holy Spirit. So the New Covenant is all about going to supernatural school of the Holy Spirit. Because the Holy Spirit is, it says, um, the love of the, the Bible emphasizes this, that we are to have and understand the love of the Father, uh, the grace of Jesus, and the communion of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is all about communing, communication, relationship, experience. He is. He says he will reveal all hidden things to us, that he will reveal the truth to us, he will reveal what Jesus said to us. So the Holy Spirit is our teacher. The Holy Spirit is our college the Holy Spirit is the one that leads us and guides us and directs us in the New Covenant. And the whole New Covenant is all about coming back into a relationship with a family God. The Bible is not about being good. The Bible is not about, I mean, um, Christianity is not about being good. It is not about um, doing right things. The Christianity is about a relationship with a daddy and his kids. As you notice, all the way through the Bible, God is called our Father. And He wants a relationship with His kids. He wants fellowship. You can't have fellowship with a dog because they're not like you. But a God can have fellowship with His kids because they are created out of the same DNA, the same seed. And so, uh, because we are like God, created in God's image and created for fellowship with God, we have communion with God. And that's what the whole new covenant, the new te a covenant is sealed in the blood of Jesus. It's the highest promise. And that's what the whole uh, new covenant is about. It's sealed in the blood of Jesus that anyone who believes that Jesus died for a lifetime of sins now just receives it by faith and can have fellowship with God uh, and being led by the Holy Spirit through the grace of Jesus. And so we got to come to an understanding that and I'm going to get back to angels because that's all part of it. But we have to come to an understanding that the Bible and Christianity is not about following rules. It's not about being good. It's not about saying you're good, you're bad, you're going to hell, you're not. It's about a relationship. A child and their parent and the child grows up. Okay. And the Holy Spirit in the New Covenant is, is there to teach us, to train us, to lead us, and to guide us. And you have to begin to trust that the Holy Spirit in you will teach, guide, and lead you. And here's another thing. Everything that the occult has belongs to the Christian. God created the supernatural. It's who we are. We are a spirit being who has a body and a soul. We are a spirit being. We're not a human being. We're a spirit being. Okay, so, um, sorry, i got to get my toll here. Uh, so, what we want to remember, I'm close up to you, hello, <laughs> Oops. <laughs> what we want to remember is that we are a spirit being, if we don't know who we are, we won't be operating in what's available to us, and we won't have understanding, if we don't understand what the new covenant is about, we won't be operating as kids of God's, God, we will be operating as 
good people who do good things, which anybody can be a good person and do good things. We are more than that. We're so much more than that. Okay, so coming to that understanding is the new covenant is all about the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is the star. The Holy Spirit is living inside of you. The Holy Spirit is empowering you and growing you up and changing you. It's all about relationship, okay? Now, you can take everything, every supernatural experience in the Old Testament and say that it's available to us even more so, okay? So you should expect supernatural encounters. The Bible says we entertain angels unaware. Well, if angels couldn't manifest and look like physical flesh, the Bible wouldn't say that we've entertained them to be careful. We've entertained them unaware. Um, and to be careful, in other words, to be aware. So angels can appear in the flesh. They can appear in many different ways to our physical eyes to see. So and angels uh, are ministering spirits sent to minister to us. And if you look up the word minister, it really means to minister. I mean, okay, if I need my foot massage, that's ministering. If I need um, a car, that's ministering. If I need these people to have new pancreas, that's ministering. So the angels minister to us. They get the body parts out of the warehouses, uh, the heavenly warehouses, and bring it to us. They um, put us in the right place at the right time. They protect us, and, and so on. So. When somebody is ministering to you, they're on your team. There has to be a, an open communication in order to have ministering. Um, I have to be able to talk to the angels, and the angels should be able to talk to me. Now, I'm not going to hear the angels if I'm watching TV. Uh, I'm not going to hear the angels if I'm watching the news, because the news is going to influence me, and I'm going to get afraid. Uh, I'm, if, I, if I'm watching TV, I, I'm, I'm going to start... See, the more you put something in front of your face, the more you have of it. You reap what you sow. You sow watching TV. Everything that's happening on TV is going to happen in your life. Your thoughts, your focus, your draw is going to be toward that. So you don't want to waste your time. If you want to walk in the supernatural stuff of God and be who God called you to be, a governing human, a governing spirit being in a human body on this earth, you need to cut out the trash. You know, because what you focus on, you'll have. The more you watch TV, the more you'll be like the world. The more you watch the news, the more you'll be afraid like the world. Uh, the more you'll get in situations, okay? But the more you focus on an experience you had with God by writing in a journal and remembering it, the more you'll have more experiences. So, you reap what you sow. If you begin to sow to the Spirit, like uh, encounters with the angels, you write it down. Uh, things that you thought you saw or heard, you write it down prophesying to people you write it down go back look at it remember it, it builds nutrients in your brain uh, that you can use to recall it and to take you back into that experiences that's what worry is worry is those things built into your brain and you go back and you think about it and then you uh, expect it and cause it to happen because you're focused on it it actually happens it's actually physical stuff in your brain so same thing with angels the more you read books about people who have experienced angels the more you watch videos uh, about people who have experienced the, and walk in the supernatural relationship with God the more you will have a supernatural relationship with God and the biggest thing is you have to get out of the box and you have to begin to dig into the word yourself you can't be lazy you can't ask someone else to go to the courts of heaven for you uh, you can't you know you can a couple times but you got to learn to do it yourself you, and, and that's what I'm here to do is to teach you and to share with you my experiences so that you can take my experiences and they can become your experiences. Okay, so I'm going to get over here. Um, so you have to be able to get out of the box. You have to stop thinking that everything that you see that is strange and unusual is not of God. It's of the devil. You have to be able to trust the Holy Spirit living inside of you that that's what's talking to you. That's what's leading you. That's what's guiding you and directing you. You got to remember everything about God is life, 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 and goodness. If what you're hearing and what you're seeing does not speak life, peace, goodness, it's not of God. Remember the kingdom of God is righteousness, peace, and joy. And we are not righteous because we behave good and do right. We are righteous because the blood of Jesus became our sin so we could become his righteousness so we could be empowered to have a relationship with God and we could be 
gods on this earth, as the Bible says. We are overlords. We are the boss of this earth. God made, God in his sovereignty choose to make man in his image as his children and to have uh, rulership over this earth. Okay, so you have to trust the Holy Spirit in you. You have to build up. Um, you have to build up uh, encounters with the supernatural by experiencing. Remember the word says that the testimony of Jesus is the, the word of prophecy or the other way around. In other words, if you give a testimony, Jesus healed me of cancer, then whoever hears that and has cancer will have the faith to be healed of cancer. So the testimony of the word of God brings that about. So the more you read in the Word and other people's experience, the more you will experience the same thing. That's why when somebody has a heart attack and they start telling you all the symptoms, because you have a symptom, that then you'll take that on, you'll begin to meditate on it, and you can have a heart attack. So that's why you never want to share with other people when they say, oh, I have this problem. You say, well, my aunt had this problem and she died and she had this symptom. Because what you're doing is you're giving them a memory which causes them to go in the same direction. So... You want to focus on the Word of God and find it in the Word. Ask the Holy Spirit to show you things in the Word uh, that you can experience. For example, 70 people in the Bible went up to heaven and ate with God and none of them were harmed. Well, if in the Old Testament, if they could go to heaven and eat with God and see God face to face, eat with God, talk with God in heaven, we can have the same experience. Okay? It's available to us. And don't let religion teach you that you can't see God face to face and live. you got to interpret the scripture right. And you got to interpret the scripture with more than one scripture. Okay? And you have to trust the Holy Spirit. He is your head. You might move from church to church, from country to country. And Jesus is always with you. Jesus is your head. Okay? Trust the Holy Spirit. And trust the experiences that you have. Remember, if it's not righteousness, uh, peace and joy is not from God. The kingdom of God is righteousness, peace and joy. Okay, Righteousness is everything that the blood of Jesus paid for you to have. You have a right to it. And you have to fight for it. And sometimes you have to go to the court of heaven to fight for it. It's all a legal battle. Anyway, so with the angels, uh, what I want to share a little bit about the angels is um, the angels are actually... The, what you see, let me get over here first and drive safely. Um, the angels, clouds that you see in heaven, and I have so many books that are bestsellers with pictures of the hosts of heaven, which are angels, are like imprints. It's like when you put your face in a bed of nails and then you pull your face out and it has your face there, you can see everything. Well, it's kind of like imprints of angels. God said in these end times that um, we would see more and more supernatural things, and that's what, what is happening. You're seeing sometimes you see them and they're a little distorted and that's because it was an imprint and just like when the water washes up when you put your foot in the sand the water washes up and sort of takes part of your foot away well that's the same thing with the pictures you're seeing the hosts of heaven and they pause long enough for you to see it and and then that's like an imprint okay so take pictures of the sky it's really one of the best ways to build up your faith this is, i tell you since i've been taking pictures of the sky and seeing angels' faces so detailed, there's no way that it could be, uh, oh, it just looks like a pig or it just looks like a horse. No, it is so detailed. You know that you know that you know that you know that you've had a supernatural encounter. The more you look at those pictures, the more you think about it, the more you focus on it, the, way, the more you go back to it, the more you'll have of it. Okay, so get outside of the box of tradition and religion and begin to trust the Holy Spirit to be your teacher, your leader, and your guide. And remember, don't go anywhere with an angel unless you ask him the question, do you believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of God that came to earth in the flesh? If he says yes, go with him wherever he wants to take you. Trust him. He's ministering to you. He's ministering life to you. Um, okay, so one way to discern when you see in the sky, sometimes you see something, you know, say, oh, that's so scary. It makes my hair stand on it. That must, must be evil. It's not. Angels make your hair stand on it. And... They're supernatural. They're scary sometimes. They're fierce. And sometimes they don't look pretty. Okay? Um, the way that God showed me just recently, when you see the hosts of heaven in the sky and how to discern them, is he said that 
the enemy wants to remain hidden. Many churches don't even believe that there is a devil. Many churches don't even believe that a, a, a spirit-filled Christian can have a demon attached to them or can have a demon influencing them. So they are ignorant of his devices and they say, ah, you know. So the devil wants to remain hidden. He doesn't want you to know where he is. He doesn't want you to know what he's doing. He wants to stay hidden. He wants to be deceptive, okay? He's darkness. He wants to be hidden, okay? So that's the biggest thing to remember. He's not going to reveal himself. And oftentimes, uh, you'll, you'll know, don't automatically assume because something is scary looking. It's a devil or it's a demon. Angels are big, scary, and fierce. Some of them. So anyway, so that's basically I'm almost at the ice skating rink and I can't wait to practice hockey today. I love my hockey and ice skating. So I'm going to shut it off for now. And um, please share this with your social media sites and your friends if this has been a blessing to you. Go to my website, robinbremer.net. I have some teaching there. A lot of teaching on YouTube. Uh, and if you're an author and have written a book, check out my website, robinbremer.net. Because for $300, I can publish your book make you an author. Okay, so be blessed. Love y'all. Talk to you later. Bye.